Hello again, welcome back to Big Board. I was reading the comments online about uh, magazines and magazine games and the magazines are available and I guess I'd posted something about either Ya Magazine or one of the others and it struck me that uh, well, there was a comment there that said, oh well, hey, you know, it'd be interesting to see what else is out there in terms of magazines. And I thought that might be a nice little comparative to have uh, a quick look at the different magazines that we currently have available to us and that have been around in the past or that may still be in production. Let me just turn this around and face around because otherwise we're going to get all messed up here. There we go. Steady. All right. And I thought I'd start off, and I'm not going to do a review, and we don't need that. Uh, I'm not going to do a, you know, like a shrink rippy thing of uh, this Compass magazine. We can have a look at that later on if we want to. Um, anyway, so let's start off with Compass magazine. Uh, well, Compass magazine. It's from Compass Games. It's called Paper Wars. It's been around for a long time. 81 issues. They do something on the order of two issues a year, thereabouts. Uh, I think five or six issues ago, they started including a game in the magazine. And you can see here, it's forty six ninety five. And the short story on that is, if you actually take out a subscription for the four issues, they, they tend to sell things in lumps of four, so that would be basically two years worth of magazine. It, it gets the price down to about $25, $27 a magazine, which I think is a reasonable price as opposed to $46.95. Because what you're getting is a, a, a fairly <clears throat> in-depth look at seven or eight games with some the nice art and layout. The graphics and the artwork have improved immensely. And this is a great article actually on Enemy Action Arden. It's written by uh, John Butterfield. There's a great review on Blocks in the East, uh, generally speaking. Uh, this is pretty well done. The, the artwork's nice. In fact, the artwork is kind of reminiscent. The I images that are put in here are kind of reminiscent of Battles magazine, which reminds me that is a magazine I don't have in the stack to look at. So we need to do that. Uh, but there's a game in here as well. And so the game, there's this, <laughs> that's my son blowing his nose. There's a, a map. It's all you know, nice quality, nice counters. Counters are, these are the larger 5 8 sized counters. And uh, the artwork on these is pretty nice. And the, the thickness and quality is pretty, pretty decent. It's not awesome, but it's decent. And this map artwork happens to be nice. And this game, I'm actually pretty interested in this game. That's uh, one, one of the guys, is it Lutman or Lutman? I never can pronounce his name correctly. Let's see if his name is in here. Herman, yeah, Lutman. He also designed a couple of games for the Tiny Battles folks that were quite fun. And this is a bit more of a serious uh, historical look at uh, the Battle of Mars Latour. So, that's, there is one option you have buying magazines, Compass Magazine, Compass, sorry, Paper Wars from Compass Games. And I just mentioned to you Ya Magazine, which is a new magazine. It's $25.99 or $26.99. Doesn't have the price on it. Uh, big format. Lots of scenarios. Lots of white space and well well presented and formatted. I really like this magazine and the articles in this magazine are really, really top notch. Good, good stuff. Uh, this in particular is a good, uh, a good uh, edition. I haven't played the game in it yet. It's called Into the Pocket. I had uh, scheduled to play it and that fell through. So that is a, so I would call that a an independent magazine, and I, and I also would say that Paper Wars is an independent magazine as well. Even though it's a house, it's run by the house, uh, Compass Games, it doesn't have too much advertorial in it. And Ya has almost no advertorial in it either. Now, of course, then you have GMT uh, has their house magazine, and it is uh, more of an insider's look to me. Uh, it's a true house magazine. It has articles and information that are only related to GMT games and GMT designers games. 
and it also, but it will on occasion interview designers outside the GMT family. They now also come with a game, and most of these games are in fairly nice uh, format. It's the uh, the kind of standard and quality you expect from a GMT game. Lots of inserts, scenarios, cards, maps, and counters. There's usually 100 to 200 counters in every edition. The only problem I have, you know, this you know, this is an older one. For this is from 2002. I don't know what the price is now. I think it's $28 or something like that. But because of where it's shipped from, for some reason, shipping's like 15 or 16 bucks. So I just buy it on eBay now. I was on the Immortal uh, list you just automatically have it sent to you and I started looking at how much I was paying for this magazine and it's way too expensive uh, for what you get uh, I'm not paying $45 for any magazine uh, basically <coughs> I always try and get my magazine sit it in that 25 to 30 dollar range particularly if it's got a game in it so that said I own every single one of these and I will continue to buy them because they are great for uh, if you own GMT games, you should be buying this magazine without a doubt. It is a very, very excellent magazine. Okay, Line of Fire. Now, this uh, may, or uh, these guys, I'm not sure if they're going to continue doing a magazine. And I don't know what format it's going to take. Uh, they have reprinted all of their magazines in color. So you can now buy all the back issues and get them all done in color. There used to be 95% of these, I think there's 15 of them. You know, 12 or 13 of them were in black and white. Once again, lots and lots of uh, scenarios for the various games that are in Line of Fire. Uh, sorry, that are from Lock and Load. It would often talk about and have articles in regards to non-Lock and Load games. So I like that. But it was really more uh, AARs, after action reports, and battle reports on lock and load games, and then lots of lock and load scenarios, which is fantastic. I, I loved this magazine as well. I hope they keep doing something with it, and I, and I, hope, I hope it stays as an in-house uh, in-house thing. Uh, I don't care if they put a game in it or not. As long as the price is reasonable, I'd be happy to buy it. Really good writing and format on those. Okay, let's get back to some of the older, uh, the more... Tried and true here. It's Decision Games has a World at War magazine. Um, and of course they have, where's the SMT? <clears throat> then there are the old SMT magazines as well. And I don't keep all these individually in bags like this typically. This is, this came this way, so it's you know it's still taped up. Uh, and this I'm about to play, and I took it on the road with me, so I put it in a baggie to keep it safe. Uh, this is an older uh, strategy and tactics number something, 114. You know, these are all out of print now. They do do, they do continue to publish this magazine. I haven't bought one in a long, long time purely because I don't really know whether the games in them are going to be particularly good or not. It's really hit or miss with strategy and tactics, and I'd rather wait and hear that it's good and then buy it. So I, I no longer subscribe to or purchase any of these. Uh, unless they happen to have something that's uh, topic specific that I'm interested in. So, uh, once again, I would call this a house magazine for decision games. This is also pretty much a house magazine. Uh, have some good articles in them. You can uh, argue about the hist historicity of them, how uh, deep and accurate they are. Some of them are awesome, some of them not so awesome. They also do another one uh, called Modern War. So there's three magazines from the one company. And they can bring them out, so I think, twice a year, maybe one, maybe once or twice a year. That's probably the, uh, the, the rub for there. So good stuff if you like, if you like buying magazine games and trying them. I think that's great. Now, Against the Odds is a, ATO is a different sort of beast. And I really don't understand this company very well. I've only played a small handful of their games. And most of the time, I do enjoy them. Uh, sometimes they take a little bit of work to get to the enjoyment. Uh, so Dien Ben Phu was one. Uh, it's called The Valley of Death. I think La Valley, La Valley, and De La Mort or something like that. Uh, I only got to play a little bit of that game, but I enjoyed it played a couple others that I enjoyed, and then I've played some that are absolute dogs, uh, so it's kind of hit or miss once again. This is a magazine company. It's really a game company to me that publishes it, publishes their games in magazine format, and I'll show you why. 
It really is, most of the time, the magazine is very uh, specifically tied to, nearly everything in this is going to be tied to the topic at hand. Uh, the, so if this is about Kaysan, you're going to see that most of the articles in the magazine are going to be in regards to Kaysan, what happened, why it happened, etc., etc. A- Andy Nunes does a great job with this. I think he's the editor. No, he's not. No, it's Edwin Irks. Well, what goes to show what I know? Someone owns this. Who owns this? I forget who owns this now. I thought it was Andy. Anyway, John Parnas actually often does many of the designs in here, so that's kind of cool. He's got uh, Napoleon Against Europe, I think. Is that what it's called? Beyond Waterloo uh, is a special edition of the magazine. Really interesting game. Okay, so there's this. This is one of the older ones, volume one, number two. <clears throat> See, twenty nine ninety five. I think they're probably 30 or $40 now. I don't know specifically, so... Be on the lookout for them because they often make some pretty decent titles. Well, worth have a look at. Okay, another house rag. Right, uh, Multimap Publishing does this special ops magazine. This has changed format many times. So the gamers used to do a magazine. Let me see if I can find an old gamers magazine. Yeah, so here's, here's the you know, original format. This is back from 2000. And these, of course, were all black and white back then, right? I enjoy these because it's a, a good little look back at some of the, uh, the gamers' titles in particular. And they go through great detailed reports and uh, optional rules and playthroughs and things like that. That's This magazine, buying some of these secondhand, is actually what got me... Uh, enthusiastic about uh, the SCS system, and uh, which then led me to OCS, which uh, was the undoing of my wallet. <laughs> so this has now become this. So let's have a look at this. Uh, Special Ops magazine is interesting. It's a once a year deal. <clears throat> they publish a game in it now as well. This is a pretty big game for this magazine. It's usually not this big, but it's full color typically. There's lots of ASL stuff. The very first one of these that switched over into this special ops format, I think it is, uh, issue one or two, I think 20 of the 40 pages were ASL, so it was kind of a bust, but there was a half-decent game in there. Uh, You know, here's a playtest of Hungarian Rhapsody, which is a new OCS title that's coming out that's going to be pretty awesome if you're into that era of the the war on the east it's a storm this is basically storm over stalingrad meets normandy uh nice big counter sheet it's got some errata counters in there as well which i'm probably gonna need to pop some of those bad boys out for yeah these are for war in the sun and i don't know what i don't know even know what those are for salerno it never snows anyway so there's a big game in here cards and stuff for the game and then you've got articles uh, on a variety of topics now that go beyond the gamers titles so here's a GTS uh, looks like a GTS game article and then there's the Battalion Combat series that we talked about that we already read all that before pretty interesting yada 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 nice ASL scenarios yet another so <coughs> I buy this all the time, but once again, I buy it on eBay. I'm not really prepared to play, pay the price they want on the pre-order or uh, or on their website. And plus, they release it at some con in the summer somewhere, which uh, I can't get to, and I, and I can't get it as soon as I'd like. I'd like to get things when they come out, particularly the magazines, so it's current. And uh, you can only get it if you go to the con. So I can buy it on eBay later. Battles Magazine. Battles Magazine kind of uh, struck a chord with everybody when it first came out because of its epic graphics and layout. You can see these pictures are pretty stunning, uh, well done. I and mean, I, I love uh, photography and the art of war from that perspective, you know, capturing the images of the game. They do a really good job of that. <clears throat> You know, nice up-close camera work. 
up on these these games. This is the sort of stuff, pictures I like to take on my games when I'm playing. Um, the articles are insightful and pretty deep. They have a, a series of articles that they write on a regular basis, uh, some about uh, small format games and block games and different things like that. It has become a little clicky. Uh, some of you may know I... Um, I have uh, some issues with a couple of folks that write for this magazine. They have been very uh, unkind, but not unkind to my face. They'd rather hide in their, in their little forum and talk about me and be bitchy. So uh, I've, I haven't been buying this as often, but look, you know, Phil Sabin writes an article in here. Yeah, that's pretty interesting stuff. There's some, uh, you know, Arrigo is a great writer as well, and he put some really nice uh, work into this. Uh, and then, you know, obviously Laurent uh, has written up some good stuff in here as well. And then you've got some other writers. What can I tell you, right? So actually this edition doesn't have as many of Charles Bassey's foolish friends in here but there you go great magazine comes with the game as well funnily enough as the games have matured the very first game that came out battle for huey i think it is uh there was lots of hoo-ha about that and it won get magazine game of the year and now there are a lot of people complaining about that game saying that it really is not that good and i can't understand why it won game of the year i haven't played it yet <clears throat> still got mine in shrink in the back and uh, i have no opinion on whether it is good or not I have found, generally speaking, so for instance, this game, I found the Vagram game to be very, very long and very, very tedious. I didn't enjoy this particular game at all. Uh, but I have played a couple of the others, and off the top of my head, I can't recall what they are. There was one that had uh, a little, uh, about the Chinese warehouse, uh, the Japanese attacking the Chinese, the Xiang warehouse, I think it was called, or something like that. That was a cool little game. Few game, few of the games are good and few of them are not. So you kind of got to write your check and hope that they're okay. That, these are all the wargaming magazines, of various age and that I know of. Uh, you can see them all there. There's uh, probably others that I haven't touched on. Uh, yes, so Counterfact is one. Counterfact is a magazine that covers for one small step. That's kind of their house magazine, and that's their wargaming-oriented magazine. They also have a, a reboot of the Ares sci-fi and fantasy magazine called Ares, which is full of fiction, and that is okay. The games in them, I've the very first edition was a kind of goofy, fun, Martians invade uh, kind of War of the Worlds thing, and... I didn't like it, but I was told that I was being too serious, so maybe I missed the point. It just didn't make any sense. It was supposed to be fun. It wasn't fun. Uh, that said, uh, they have a couple of other titles that have come along since then that are very interesting. Oh, and there's another magazine for you that's an independent. Uh, so Counterfact is a, a magazine that's worth having a look at, actually. Uh, Aries, I don't know. Uh, we'll see once the game arrives for the third edition, uh, the third volume of that uh, magazine. I'll play that game and let you know. But there's another one called The War Diary, and it's kind of upped its game a little bit too. They've started including a game in in it. Uh, you can. I've got a co I've got a copy of it lying around somewhere, but I don't want to make the video much longer. It's already 20 minutes long, so. Let me say that the War Diary is a very inexpensive magazine. It's worth having a look at. You might find the articles interesting. I think they've improved their their layout and formatting and content significantly since uh, the first two editions came out. I do believe it's only $20 to subscribe for the year, and you get two or three editions a year, so it's a, it's a worthwhile endeavor. All right, uh, I think that's it for the magazine story. So now all those people that were asking me about magazines and what's available, now you know. There it is. Talk to you soon.